Well, hello. Welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. I've wanted to get my hands on this for a little while, and we'll talk about it in a second. But the company Anchor has been around for quite some time, and they usually make peripherals for your phone or your computer. Like here's a wireless charger from Anchor. You may have a lot of their stuff and not even realize it. I have a plug here that also uh, increases the amount of plugs for your outlets and also gives you USB ports. So they've been out there making cables, USB hubs, chargers for your phone, and that's primarily where I've heard of Anchor. Their products have always been well-designed, durable, and also stylish. And then they went into the portable power station market about a year and a half ago, and they went in with a bang, I think. This unit just came out not that long ago. It's an Anchor 767 powerhouse. And this baby is a, a little beast. And we're going to test it out here to see if it's holding up to all the hype that I've heard about. Good sized portable power station. It comes in at around 67 pounds. It has wheels here for towing. It has a nice handle here that slides out. It makes it easier to maneuver around where you need to take it. And then you also have these two rubber pads. So if you're towing this thing around and you want to make it vertical, uh, a nice surface without worrying about scratching anything up. And then if we just want to start with the front here, we'll go from the top down. This light here is a pretty good area light if you were to take it out camping, have it on a camping trip. It really is pretty bright. This really lights up a good size area. You can also turn it into an SOS function if you want through the phone app. The display is very cool and informative. It will tell you your wattage in, wattage out, time remaining. It'll tell you what other ports that you have plugged in. If you turn on an outlet, if you turn on the DC outlets, and you'll get little icons for everything that is on. There is a Bluetooth function, so you hook this up through your phone, through Bluetooth. There's also a power saving mode button here. And basically what that is, if you turn that on, you'll see that you have a green LED indicator light. And what that means is when you have that activated, if none of these ports sense anything being charged in 15 minutes, it will shut these things down automatically to save power. Now, if you turn that off, and if you have something like a 12 volt fridge, that cycles its power on and off and it might mask being off for a long period of time you could just leave these ports on indefinitely so if your fridge cycles shuts off for a little while turns back on it's not going to automatically shut down and then on the left here you have four ac outputs that are rated at 2400 watts so these are 20 amp circuits here here is if you're familiar with this connection most rvers are familiar with this this is technically a 30 amp connection that you would use in an RV park. And we're gonna hook this up directly to my RV. We're gonna to try to make some coffee inside and run the fireplace at the same time. All right, I'm currently in our RV. I got the Anchor Powerhouse set up outside. Why don't you go check out how I have it hooked up. I'll wait, go ahead, go on. So I plugged in my 30 amp connection into the Anchor Powerhouse 767. I haven't turned it on yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the app you can see the plug runs to the RV over to the powerhouse. I have it in the back of my pickup. And that would probably simulate me being on a trip. You want to make a cup of coffee. You want to use your microwave. You want to use a hot plate. And the generator hours might not start until 10 a.m. You want to get that cup of coffee going. So this is a, a perfect solution for that. I have not turned on the power to the RV yet. I am going to use the app and connect remotely to it. And when I turn this on, the RV is gonna to want to start doing a few things, charging the battery and kind of take over the lights in here. So I'm turning on the AC. A little click, I just heard the microwave click on. And now I'm seeing that there's an output of 162 watts coming into the RV which is probably typical. Right now it's probably kind of taking over some of the DC lights that we have going on here and it's probably charging my lead acid battery that I keep in there in the winter time. Also, um, there is a refrigerator that is on the outlets too and it's probably going to be powering uh, a small electric fridge that runs off of AC power. The power station itself is at 62 degrees Fahrenheit even though today it's about 45 degrees outside. This coffee maker Keurig is the same as its big sisters. It uh, draws the same amount of wattage so it really doesn't matter what size you have. We have this smaller size for the RV but it It'll pull close to 1400 to 1500 watts when it starts heating up the water. And right now we uh, just heard the pump go off. Okay, right now the power station is showing 1405 watts on the output. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn on the fireplace and see if it can handle both 
it's too cold to run the air conditioner so the fireplace is just turned on come back and now we're pulling around 2700 watts total this may overload the power station I can hear the water heating up here I'm gonna run outside real quick just to see what um, is going on with the power station live okay so we have the uh, coffee coming in the wattage jumped down to 1500 watts now that's the fireplace along with what else is going on with the RV charging the lead acid battery running some of these lights all right so I think that's pretty good because it was able to handle the coffee maker and the fireplace on at the same time which is pretty incredible it's pulling over 2700 watts for probably about 45 seconds to a minute also in the background there's some other things going on it's probably charging the lead acid battery through the converter all in all I was pretty surprised I thought for sure that it was going to overload after about 10 seconds but it kept going I got a nice steaming hot cup of coffee over here for pop-ups hybrids and couples campers 30 amps is usually the typical connection for your RV now I would venture to say this has a 15,000 BTU air conditioner on it and if I were plugged in and just making sure that I wasn't running anything else at the time that I could probably run the air conditioner off of this thing so it would be interesting to know it's a little too chilly outside it's about 45 as I said for me to try to turn the air conditioner on I don't really feel like taking a chance on damaging our compressor then here it's a little unique that you have two of these DC outputs cigarette style outputs most power stations only come with one so that comes in handy if you have maybe a couple plug-in uh, 12 volt refrigerators portable like cooler style refrigerators and you're on a camping trip and you want to plug in a couple of these and then here on the right you have usb connections these are all 100 watt usb c connections here you have your usb a connections underneath two of those so all your outputs are on the front of the machine and then if you go to the rear this is where all your inputs are so you have your ac input here you have a reset button in the center and then you have your solar connection here on the very left on the bottom here you'll see a connection port for a expandable battery pack that you can buy and double the capacity of this so the capacity of this machine is 2048 watt hours if you buy the expansion battery for this you can double that and you would end up with 4096 watt hours which would be pretty close to what you might use in an average day in your household if the power went out not including things like air conditioner running electric dryer stuff like that now it will take up to 1000 watts of solar here on the top but you have to jump through a couple hoops to get to that 1000 the easiest way is to just buy anchor solar panels they come 200 watts at a time they're portable and they're designed to work with their special hub that basically has five ports on it you plug into the five ports and then you plug into the solar connection here and you get the 1000 watts their solar panels are made specially for this purpose if you look at the requirements for a solar panel here it's going to say 11 to 32 volts at 10 amps and then 32 to 60 volts 20 amps so their 200 watt solar panels are designed in a way that the voltage of those solar panels are right around 57 volts and then the amperage is right around 4.1 amps so if you were to add five of those together and you're basically adding them in a parallel configuration because the voltage is staying the same but the amperages will add up you can add up those solar panels so the voltage is going to stay under the 60 that this requires the amperage is just going to be right around 20 amps on those solar panels that's where you get your 1000 watts now if you think you have your own solar panels and you want to hook them up to this you can but you need to pay attention to those numbers specifically you don't want to go over 60 volts and you don't want to go over 20 amps the amperage you can go over and it's just going to get regulated inside the device here so you're just kind of wasting that excess power but the voltage is one thing you want to keep within the parameters of this connection let's get into some of the details of this power station it comes with lithium iron phosphate batteries which is good for 3000 cycles and that will last you probably upwards of around 10 years they are marketing this to last you 10 years of service so it should be at 80 percent around the 10 year mark this also comes with a five-year warranty which is pretty darn good compared to most other power stations a lot of times the best I see is two years uh, their customer service is great when it comes to getting a hold of an actual person and talking to somebody 
Most other power station companies, if you have an issue, you end up sending an email somewhere and it might be a day or two before you get a response back. And just um, deciding how you're gonna remedy your situation could go on for days and days and days. Where this, there's an actual number printed on, on the unit itself and you can call for customer support. Pretty unheard of with most power station companies out there. I've been using this now for a couple weeks, messing around with it, testing it out, and hauling it back and forth from the pole barn. These wheels seem very durable. I've been towing it through mud, over gravel, down my driveway, back and forth to the house, to the pole barn with no issues. If you look on the case of the power station here, you'll see it has GAN Prime. And basically what that is, is it's a technology in their circuitry that they use, which makes this unit more efficient than most other power stations. And basically to sum it up, what it does is GAN Prime, it stands for gallium nitrate, and that is a compound used in their circuitry. A lot of other power stations, when you charge them, you hear the fan click on, and if you feel here, you feel uh, almost like a, a small portable heater with the heat coming out the side. With this, it cuts down on the heat, which means that it cuts down on the waste of excess power that it takes to charge one of these. The best way I can kind of explain this, let's just pull numbers out of the air, but if you have a 2,500 watt hour power station, go to charge that from zero, and if you were to put a, a power meter on there to measure how much power it took to charge that power station, it's gonna be more than 2,500 watt hours. Where this is gonna be more efficient and be closer to that 2,500 watt hours, a lot of times these fans aren't even gonna click on unless you're charging at full capacity for a long period of time but I've yet to really hear them come on at any full speed compared to other power stations that I have. When it does come on, you can barely tell that the fan is on. Now this power station can be controlled by a smart app, which is nice also. You can sync it with Bluetooth, start up the app. It does not go over Wi-Fi, it just goes through Bluetooth. So you're gonna have to be somewhat close to the unit. I have been able to use it like 40 or 50 feet away. I have been able to use it through walls, like if I'm inside my RV and this is uh, sitting in the back of my pickup truck, I have been able to control the outlets, turn them off and on. Other things you can do with the app is you can control this light, turn it into an SOS mode. You can adjust the input of what, how much power you want to come into these power stations. This one in particular can be charged from zero to 100% in under two hours. I'm not a big fan of using these to the extremes. I always kind of baby them a little bit. So, so I don't mind for it to take a little bit longer to charge unless it's an emergency. So back to these AC outlets, they are a pure sine wave AC outlet. They do output at 120 volts, which a lot of these power stations stations only output at 110 volts. So being at 120 volts, I think helps out when it comes to using power tools. Now, one thing about the RV connection here, it's called a TT30 connection, 30 amps, but it technically is not 30 amps. It is 20 amps, just like the rest of the AC outlets. So if you hooked up and started charging uh, three different laptops and stuff to the USB-A and stuff into these DC outputs here, you can really get close to 600 watts being outputted on the DC side. Now these ports are regulated. They're regulated at 13.4 volts. So that basically means whatever the status of your battery is, it hangs on to that 13.4 volts until it dies. It does not fluctuate. When it comes to solar and AC charging, you can only do one or the other. It favors AC over solar when you have both plugged in. Also, you can do pass-through charging on this. If you have your solar panels connected to this, you can also use it while you're bringing power in from the sun. A few weeks ago, I tested out another power station similar to size and capacity to this one, and I said, as long as I don't take up arc welding, this should run all my needs in the pole barn. Well, I'm thinking with this, I can take up arc welding. I'm gonna see if I can overload this now. I'm gonna take three high wattage appliances. First, I'm gonna start out with just a circular saw. Then I'm going to add a shop vac and the circular saw. And if it still hasn't overloaded yet, I'm going to add a compressor, shop vac, and a circular saw and see how that does.
So trying to do all three, it did bog down a little bit when I started up the circular saw. You could hear a definite um, wind down on the motors of both the compressor and the shop vac. But once the circular saw was up and running and had that startup wattage out of the way, it seemed like they all recovered and were running all right. Would I make a habit of trying to do three high wattage appliances? No, but I just wanted to show you and it did not overload doing all three of those. I'm pretty impressed with the way this thing can handle AC outputs. This also comes with an accessory pouch and in it you will get your five port adapter for if you want to connect multiple solar panels to this. Let's say you had three of these ports filled with solar panels and the voltage is up around 50 volts. You could shock yourself if you were to touch these exposed ends. So I would recommend covering the unexposed ones up with some sort of electrical tape. It's nice to have this connection like this and to be able to connect in different arrays of solar panels but there could be a hazard involved with this and I just wanted to mention that. Also in the uh, pouch comes a DC charger with the same XT60 connection for your car. You have your AC plug. So that all comes in a little pouch. So my impressions of this power station, I am pretty impressed. This thing's built like a tank. I think they took a page out of Apple's playbook. Apple notoriously will see a product that already exists figure out how that they can make it better, easier to use, uh, better design and functionality, and then they roll with it. They've done it with the iPhone, they've done it with the iPods and MP3 players. So I think that Anchor has done that with this power station. They let all the other ones build power stations in the last couple of years. They looked at what was going on in the market. They figured out what can make it a little bit better, what could be a little bit easier. The design of this is very nice. It's pleasing to the eye, very solid. The circuitry inside is very solid. I like the fact that it has the five-year warranty. I also like the fact that you can get a hold of a human if you need to, if you should have any problems with it. Currently, this unit is on sale for $19.99. Sometimes it's around $2,200. And that is a little bit pricey, but when you consider the craftsmanship, the build quality, the features in here, the technology in here, and the, the ease of use, the thought process that went in here, design that went into here, five-year warranty, not to mention the customer service, I think that that is worth the price of that admission. If you want to get a, a power station of this size but spend less money, they're out there but you could have problems. It could be hard to solve. The technology might not be as great. The accuracy of your watts coming in and going out may not be as great. So I mentioned this just came out recently, but they also make other powerhouse power stations such as the 535, 555, and the 757. The 757 is just one step below this unit here, the 767. That one, I believe, has a AC capacity output of 1500 watts. So that's my overall impressions of this power station. If I had anything to say negatively about it, it does not have any wireless charging for, let's say, a phone on top, which this is a nice flat surface for that up here. I think in some of these power stations that have these smart apps, it would be nice to know the battery history to have in the app. How many cycles has that battery gone through? And I don't think that would be too hard to record inside the app. It might be able to be shown in a future firmware upgrade. And that's another nice thing about having the app. You might find bugs when a, a lot of people are using these things and they can just push out a firmware upgrade that takes care of it. I really can't find too many things wrong about this. The 67 pounds is bulky, but you would expect that in a power station this size. So I'll leave some links below. They're also gonna be running some sales and some promotions. And if I get any of that information, I'll also leave that below in the description. Well, that's gonna do it for this power station review. I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you wanna know when a new one is coming out and uh, keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody. So one thing I like is good calibration when it comes to a power station like this. And this seems to be showing it because it says it has 2% battery power left and it's draining down to where you think it's just gonna die. But I've seen other power stations that say they have 15 minutes left or they have 12% battery power left and then they just die at those points. So they're not well calibrated when it comes to what it's drawing and how much time is left. And this one appears to be going right down to the wire and it's probably just gonna shut off and there we go, 1% and we're done.